from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering Activio 2019 Data Driven. Brought to you by Activio. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. We're here at the Inter Intercontinental Hotel at Actifio's Data Driven Conference, day one. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in on the ground tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman is here. So is John Furrier. My friend Frank Jensen is here. He's the Senior Vice President and Chief Analyst at IDC and Head Dot Connector. Frank, welcome well, to theCUBE. thank you, Dave. First time. First time. Newbie, yep. you're going to crush it, be, I know. Be, be gentle. Um, you know, you, <laughs> you're awesome. I, I, I've watched you over the many years. I, of course, you know, you know, IDC, we get competitive, and it's like, who, could, who gets the best rating? Frank always had the best ratings at the Directions Conference. I could, he's blushing, but I could I never, don't know if that's true, I could but never I'll beat him, it. no matter how hard I tried, but, uh, but you're a phenomenal speaker, and you gave a great conversation this morning. I'm sure you drew a lot uh, from your Directions talk, but you, every year, you lay down this, you know, sort of mini manifesto. You, you describe it as you, you connect the dots, you, 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 IDC, thousands of analysts, and it's your job to say, okay, what does this all mean? Not in the micro, but let's up level a little bit. Yeah. So what's happening? You talked today, you, know, you gave your version of the wave slides. Mm -hmm. So where are we in the waves? We're entering, sort of exiting what you call the experimentation phase yep. and coming in to a new phase, the multiplied innovation. I saw AI on there, blockchain, some other technologies. Where are we today? Yeah, well, I, I think having mental models of the industry or any complex system is pretty important. I, I mean, I've made a career dumbing down a complex industry into something simple enough that I can understand. So we've done it again now with, uh, at IDC with what we call the third platform. So, you know, 10 years ago, seeing that uh, a whole raft of new technologies at the time were coming in that would become the foundation for the next 30 years of tech. So that's an old story now, cloud, mobile, social, big data. Mm -hmm. Obviously, IoT technologies coming in a blockchain and so forth. So we call uh, this general era the third platform, but we noticed a few years ago, well, we're at the threshold of kind of a major scale up of innovation in this third platform era that's very different from the last 20, 10 or 12 years, which we call the, the experimentation stage, where people were using this stuff, using the cloud, using mobile, big data, to create cool things, but they were doing it in a kind of, uh, isolated way, kind of the traditional, well, I'm going to invent something, I may have a few friends help me, uh, whereas the promise of the cloud has been, well, if you have a lot of developers out on the cloud that form a community, an ecosystem, think of GitHub or you know, any of the big code repositories or the ability to have shared services off an Amazon cloud or an IBM or, or Google or Microsoft, the promise is there to actually bring to life what Bill Joy said you know, in the 90s, which was no matter how smart you are, most of the smart people in the world work for someone else. So the question's always been, well, how, how, do you, how do I tap into all those other smart people who don't work for me? So we kind of feel that, that where we are in the industry right now is that the business model of multiplied innovation, or if you prefer networked or collaborative innovation, being able to build something interesting quickly uh, using a lot of innovation from other people, and then adding your special sauce, that that's going to take the scale of innovation just up a couple of orders of magnitude. And the pace, of course, that goes with that is uh, people are innovating in a much more rapid clip now. Really, So really the, the full promise of a cloud native innovation model. So we, so we kind of feel like we're right here, which means uh, you know, there are lots of big changes around the technologies, around kind of the world of developers and apps. AI is changing, and of course the industry structure itself. You know, the power positions, you know, a lot of vendors have spent a lot of energy trying to protect the power positions of the last 30 years. Yeah, so we'll get into right. some of that. And so, yeah, yeah. So, but you know, everybody talks about digital transformation, and they, they kind of roll their eyes like it's a big buzzword, but it's real. It's data, we're at the data-driven conference, and, and, and data, you know, being at the heart of, of, of businesses means that you're seeing Businesses tra transition industries or traverse industries. You know, Amazon getting into groceries, Apple getting into content, Amazon as well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, my question is, what's a tech company? I mean, you know, Benioff says that you know every company is a, a SaaS company, uh, and you're certainly seeing that. I mean, it's got to be great for your business. Yeah. You know, yep, IDC. Absolutely. You know, the, you know uh, uh, quantifying all those markets. But I mean, the market that you quantify is just it's it's every company now. 
banks, insurance companies, gro grocers. You know, yeah, yeah. No, everybody's no, no. a tech company. I, th I think yeah, no, that, that's hundred percent right. Is that uh, this is the this is the biggest revolution in the economy? You know, for many many decades, or you might say centuries even. Is yeah, the uh, uh, whoever put it was it. Uh, Mark Andreessen, or who, whoever talked about software yeah. eating the world, yeah, right. we're we're in the middle of that. Only the software now is being delivered in the form of digital or cloud services. So, you know, every company is a tech company, and of course, it really raises the question: Well, what are, what are tech companies? You know, mm. they need to kind of think back yeah. about well, where's our value add? But, but it is great. Mm. It's when we look at the uh, the world of clouds. One of the first things we observed in 2007, 2008 was, well, clouds w wasn't just about S3 storage clouds or, or Salesforce.com software as a service. It's a model that can be applied to any industry, any company, any offering. And of course, we've seen all these startups, whether it's Uber or Netflix or whoever it is, basically digital innovation in every single industry transforming that industry. So, I mean, to me, that's the exciting part is that 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 model of transforming industries through the use of software, through digital technology, in that, in, in that kind of experiment, experimentation stage, it was mainly a startup story. All those unicorns. To me, the multiplied innovation chapter, it's about finally, you know, the cities, the Procter and Gambles, the Walmarts, the John Deere's are finally saying, Hey, this cloud platform and digital innovation stuff, we can do that in our industry. Yeah, so entrepreneurship is actually you know, starting yeah. to happen. So for, for you and I have seen a lot of cycles. We, we watch the, you know, the sort of mainframe wave get crushed by the microprocessor-based revolution. I just see at the time we spent a lot of time vacuum tubes. looking at that vacuum tubes, <laughs> right? Water cooled is back. Um, so, so, but, but the industry has marched to the cadence of Moore's Law forever. I mean, even Thomas Friedman, when he talks about you know, all his stuff, you know, throws in you know, Moore's Law. But no longer is Moore's Law the sort of engine of innovation. Mm -hmm. There's other factors. So what's the innovation cocktail looking forward over the next 10 years? You've talked about cloud, you know, we talk about AI. Yeah. What, what, what's that you know, sandwich, the, the innovation sandwich look like? Yeah, so to me, I think it is the harnessing of all this uh, flood of technologies, again, that are mainly coming off the cloud, but, uh, and, and that, that, that uh, parade is not not stopping, quantum, you know, lots of other technologies are coming down the pike. But to me, the, uh, you know, it is the mixture of, uh, number one, the cloud, public cloud stacks being able to travel anywhere in the world. So take the, take the cloud on the, uh, on the road. So it's, it's, it's even, um, I would say, not even just scale, I think of, that's almost like a vo amount of compute power, mm -hmm. which could happen inside multiple hyperscale data centers. I'm also thinking about scale in terms of a horizontal. Bringing so that model anywhere. Take or, me out to the edge. Wherever your data you know, Take me to a cruise, carnival cruise ship. You know, mm -hmm. Take me to an, you know, a, an Apple-powered you know, autonomous car, or, or take me to a hospital or a retail store. So, so the cl public cloud stacks, where all the innovation is basically happening in the industry, jailbreaking that out, so it can come you know, through Amazon, AWS out, Outposts, or mm -hmm. Azure Stack, or Google Anthos, this movement of the cloud guys to say, we'll take public cloud innovation wherever you need it. That, to me, is a big part of the cocktail, because uh, that's, you know, basically the public clouds have been the epicenter of most tech innovation in the last three or yeah. four years, so that's very important. Um, I think, you know, just quickly, the, the other piece of the puzzle is the revolution that's happening in uh, the modularity of apps, so the microservices revolution, so uh, the, ref the building of new apps and the refactoring of old apps using containers, using ser serverless technologies, mm -hmm. you know, API lifecycle management technologies, and of course agile development methods kind of getting to this kind of iterative sp sped up deployment model where people you know, might have deployed new code four times a year, they're now deploying it uh, four times a minute yeah, yeah, right. in a cloud native. So to me that's, and, and kind of aligned with that is, is what I was mentioning before, that if you can apply that uh, kind of uh, ra rapid scale, massive volume innovation model and bring others into the party, so now you're part of a cloud connected community of innovators. And again, that could be around uh, GitHub or it could be around a Google or Amazon or it could be around uh, in a Walmart, in a retail 
world, or, or an Amazon retailer, or could be around a Procter & Gamble, in a, or around a Disney and digital entertainment, you know, where they're creating ecosystems of innovators, and so to me, bringing people, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just these technologies that enable rapid, high volume, modular innovation, but it's then, okay, now plugging lots of people's brains together. It's just going to, I think the, here, here's the... Uh, and all the data that that throws off, obviously. Throws yeah. a ton of data, but to me, the, uh, the number we use, it kind of is the uh, punchline for, well, where does multiplied innovation lead? A distributed cloud, this revolution in distributed modular massive scale development um, that we think the next five years we'll see as many new apps developed and deployed as we saw developed and deployed the last 40 years. So five years, the next five years versus the last 40 years. And so to me, that's, that is the revolution because you know, when that happens, that means we're going to start seeing that long tail of use cases that people can never get to. You know, all the highly verticalized use cases uh, are going to be filled, you know, are going to finally, you know, a lot of white space has been white for decades. It's going to start getting a lot of cool colors and a lot of solutions delivered to them. Let's talk about some of the, the macro stuff. And I don't know the exact numbers, but it's, IDC number is probably three trillion, maybe it's four trillion now. It's a big market. Mm -hmm. You talked today about uh, the market's growing 2x uh, GDP. Yep. So the tech market, that is. Um, why is it that the the tech market is able to grow at a rate faster than, than GDP. And is there a relationship between GDP and tech growth? Yeah, well, I think we are still, while you know, we've been in tech, let's talk about those, the apps developed the last 40 years, we've both been there, yeah. right? So it's... Right. Uh, and that includes the, you know, the <laughs> iPhone apps too. So that's actually a pretty impressive number when you think oh, yeah. about the last 10 years being included in that number. So. A absolutely, but if, if you think about it, we are still kind of teenagers. You know, it, when you think about that, uh, Andreessen, idea of software eating the world. You know, we're just kind of on the early appetizer. You know, we haven't, the, the sorbet is coming to clear our palate yeah. you know, before we go to the next course, but we're not even close to the main course. And so I think when you look at the, uh, kind of the percentage of, uh, of uh, companies and industry process that is digital, that has been highly digitized, we're still early days. So to me, I think that's, that's why. That, that this kind of the steady state of how much of an industry's kind of process and data flow is based on software. I'll just make up a number, you know, that, that we may be a third of the way to whatever the steady state is. We got two thirds of the way to go. So to me, that's, that supports uh, growth of IT investment rising at double the rate of overall yeah. because it's, it's, uh, it's sucking in and absorbing and transforming big pieces of the existing economy. So given the size of the market, given that all companies are tech companies, um, what are your thoughts on the narrative right now? You're hearing a lot of pressure from you know, public policy to break up big tech. Do you think, and we saw, you, know, you and I were there when Microsoft was, and I would argue they were yeah. you know, breaking the law, and okay, the Department of Justice did the right thing, and they put a little handcuff on them. Yeah. But they never really you know, went after the whole breakup scenario. When you're hearing a lot of that, a lot of it, it's a vitriol. Definitely. Do you think that makes sense to, to break up big tech and what would the result be? You don't think, you don't think I'm going to step on those landmines, do you? Uh, okay, well, I got an opinion. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, all right, I'll give you mine uh, then. All right, since you've I got mean, I'll, I'll lay it out there. I just think if you break up big tech, the, 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 the little techs are going to get bigger. Yeah. It's going to be like AT&T all over again. Well, I guess, and the other thing I would add is if, if you, if you want to you know, go after China for you know, IP theft, okay, fine. But why would you attack the, the AI leaders. Yeah. Now, if they're breaking the law, that should not be allowed. Um, I'm not from, you know, monopolistic, you know, illegal behavior. What are your thoughts? All right, you've convinced me to answer this no, we, question. We're having a conversation. Right. Nothing right, like a little okay. competitive juice going, <laughs> okay. You're totally wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, lay, it, lay it out for me. No, I think, you know, but this has been a recurring pattern, as, as you were saying, so it even goes back further to, uh, you know, AT&T and people wanting to connect other people's, the Carter phone, and it goes to yeah. IBM mainframes opening up to peripherals. And so Rome. This, this thing, right, it goes back to Rome, exactly. It goes back to the wheel. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah, to me, I th it's a valid question to ask. And I think, um, you know, part of the story I was telling, that multiplied innovation story, is really, a, and, the, and the Bill Joy, Joy's law, is really about platforms, right? And so when you get aggregated a portfolio of technical capabilities that allow innovation to happen, right? So the great thing is, 
you know, you typically see concentration and consolidation around those platforms, but of course they give life to a lot of competition and growth on top of them. So that to me is the, that's the conundrum. Because if you attack the platform, you may send us back into this kind of disaggregated, <laughs> less creative. So that's the, 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 the art is to take the scalpel and figure out, well, where are the appropriate boundaries for you know, putting those walls where if you're in this part of the industry, you can't be in this. So to me, I think one at least reasonable uh, way to think about it is, is uh, so for example, if you are a major cloud platform player, right, you're providing all of the, you know, the AI services, the cloud services, the compute services, the blockchain services that a lot of the SaaS world is using, that somebody could argue, well, if you get too strong in the SaaS world, you are then could be in the position to give yourself favorable position from the platform because everyone in the SaaS world is depending on the platform. So somebody might say, well, you can't be in. You know, if you're in the SaaS business, you have to separate that from the platform business. Um, and but I think to me, you, you so that's a that's a logical way to do it, but I think you also have to ask, well, is, are people actually abusing, right? So I, I, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a really good question. I, I, don't, I don't think it's fair to just say, well, theoretically it could be abused. Right. If the abuse is not happening, I don't think you, it's appropriate to kind of prophylactically, you know, it's, it's like uh, go after a crime before it's committed. Um, so I think, and then uh, I think the other thing that's happening is Often uh, these monopolies or power positions have been about economic power, pricing power. I think there's another dynamic happening because consumer data, people's data, the Facebook phenomenon yep. and Twitter and the rest, there's a lot of stuff that, that's not necessarily about pricing, but that's about kind of social norms and privacy that I think are, are at, at work in that that we haven't really seen as big a factor. I mean, obviously we've had pri uh, uh, privacy regulation in Europe with GDPR and the rest obviously in tech, but part of that's because of these social platforms. But, so that's, that's another vector that is coming in. And, um, well, you'd like to see the government you know, actually say, okay, this, this is the framework, uh, or, or this is you know, what we think the law should be. Yeah. I mean, part of it is, okay, Facebook, they have incentives to appropriate our data yeah. and, and make it, okay and maybe they're not taking enough responsibility for it, but, but I to date have not seen the evidence as we did with you know, Microsoft wiping out you know, Lotus and, and, and Novell and WordPerfect through bundling and, mm -hmm. and what it did to, to Netscape with bundling you know, the browser and the price you know, uh, practices. that I, I don't see that. Maybe I'm just missing it, but yeah, but I think that's going to be all around, you know, online advertising and all that stuff. That, that to me, that's kind of the market. Yeah, so Google, thing. some of the Google stuff, that's, yeah. that's probably legit, and that's fine. They should stop that. But but to uh, me, the know? bigger issue is more around uh, privacy. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's a social norms, it's a societal. It's not an economic factor. I think around Facebook and and the social platforms, and I I think I don't know what the right answer is, but I think certainly government. Uh, it's legitimate for those questions to be asked. Well, maybe GDPR becomes that framework. So, they're trying to give us the hook, but I'm having too much fun, so I want to <laughs> stick out. I don't know how closely you follow Facebook. I mean, they're obviously big techs. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Facebook has this big crypto play. Seems like they're using it for you know, driving an ecosystem and making money, yeah, as opposed yeah. to dealing with the privacy issue. I'd like to see more on the latter than the, than the former, perhaps. But any thoughts on Facebook and what's going on there with their crypto play? Yeah, I, I, I don't study them yes. all that much, so I, I am fascinated when Mark Zuckerberg is saying, well now, our key business now is about privacy, and uh, which I, I find interesting. You know? <laughs> it doesn't feel that way necessarily as a yeah, yeah. consumer and as an observer, but... Um, well, you're on Facebook, I'm on Facebook. We yeah, see yeah. Today. Okay, so how yeah. about big IPOs? We're in the 10th year now of this huge yeah. you know, tailwind for, for tech. Obviously, you got you know, guys like Uber and, and, and Lyft going IPO, yep. losing tons of money. Yep. Um, stocks actually haven't done that well, which is kind of interesting. Yep. You saw Zoom you know, go public, doing, doing, doing very well. Slack is about to go public, so there's really a rush to IPOs. Your thoughts on that? Is this sustainable? Are we kind of coming to the end here? Or? Yeah, so I think in part, you know, predicting the stock market waves is a very tough thing to do, but I think uh, one kind of uh, secular 
trend that is going to be relevant for these tech IPOs is what I was mentioning earlier is that we, we've now had a 10, 12 year run of basically startups coming in and reinventing industries while the incumbents in the industries are basically sitting on their hands uh, or sleeping. And so to me, the next 10 years, those startups are going to, not that, uh, I mean, we've, we've seen that large companies waking up doesn't necessarily always lead to success, but it feels to me it's going to be a more competitive environment uh, for all those startups because the incumbents, not all of them, and maybe not even most of them, but some decent portion of them are going to wind up becoming digital giants in their own industry. So to me, I think that's a, it's a different world the next 10 years than the last 10. I do think one important thing, and I think it, around acquisitions, M&A, and we saw it just the last few weeks with Google Looker. and Looker, and we saw Tableau with Salesforce, is that that, you know, we, we're the me, uh, mega cloud world of um, uh, Microsoft, Azure, and Amazon, Google, that world is clearly consolidating. There's room for three or four global players, and that game's almost over. But there's another power position on top of that, which is around where do the, all the app, business app guys, all the sweet guys, SAP, Oracle, Salesforce, Adobe, Microsoft, you name it, where did they go? And so we see, we Service now, now kind of getting big. Yeah, and, absolutely, you know, and, so, so we are entering a, an intensive period, and I, I think again the Tableau and Looker is just an example where those companies are all stepping on the gas to become better platforms. Mm -hmm. So apps as platforms, or app portfolio as platforms, uh, so much more of a data play, analytics play, buying other pieces of the app portfolio that they may not have, and basically scaling up to become the business process platforms and ecosystems there. So I think we are just at the beginning of that. So look for a lot of SaaS companies And, and I wonder to if go. Amazon can become a platform for developers to actually disrupt those traditional SaaS guys, because that yeah. it's not obvious to me how those guys get disrupted. And I'm thinking, everybody says, oh, is Amazon going to get into the app space? Yeah, maybe someday if they have to do a TAM expansion, but it seems to me that they become a platform for new apps. You know, your yeah, apps yeah, exposure at the edge, yeah. obviously. Well, there, there, you know, there's mobile. no question. That I think those app-centric apps is what I'd call that, that yeah. competition up there and versus kind of the mega clouds. There's no question the mega cloud guys, <laughs> they've already started launching like call center, contact center software. They'll, they're creeping up mm -hmm. into that that world of, uh, of business apps. And so I don't think they're going to stop. And, uh, and so I think that that is a reasonable place to look is will they just start trying to create yeah. in effect suites and platforms around SaaS of their Startups, own? Startups, ecosystems like you are saying. All right, I got to give you some rapid fire yeah, questions yeah. here. So okay. um, when do you think, or do you think, no, I'm going to say when do you think that owning and driving your own car will become the exception rather than the norm? Buy into the autonomous vehicles? Uh, I think to me, that. that's a 10-year okay. type of horizon. Okay, 10 plus, horizon. all right. Yeah. Um, when will machines be able to make better diagnoses than doctors? Uh, that, well, you could argue that in some fields, we're almost it's there, error, yeah. we're there. Yeah. So, right, so it's all about the, the <laughs> scope of the right. issue, right? So if it's reading a radiology you know, film yep. or image, to look for something right there. We're almost there. Okay, so but I more complex can cancers or whatever, that's going to take more. A doc connector question. So, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> do you think large retail stores will uh, essentially disappear? Oh boy, that's a tie. They certainly won't disappear, but I think the, and so the Witness Apple and the Amazon even trying to come. So it feels that the mix is certainly shifting, right? So I, it feels to me that the model of retail presence, I think that will still be important touch, feel, look, socialize, but it feels like the days of uh, you know, 10,000 or 5,000 store chains, mm. feels like that's declining in a big way. How about big banks? You think they'll lose control of the uh, payment systems? I think they're already starting to. Mm. Yeah, so I, I would say that that is, uh, and they're trying to get in and compete, so I think that, that is on its way, no question. That's, I think that horse is out of the barn. So cloud, AI, new apps, new innovation cocktail, software eating the world, everybody's a, a tech company. Frank Chenz, great to have you. Dave, always great Appreciate to see your you. Time. Yeah, All thanks. right, keep it right there, everybody. You're watching theCUBE from Actifio, Data Driven 19. We'll be right back right after this short break.